This presentation will examine the chi-square confidence interval for the variance. To use this technique, we have to establish when it's fair, and it's fair if the underlying distribution is normal. You will recall in our discussion for the t-interval, we had two possibilities. Either the sample came from a normal distribution, or the sample was large enough, typically greater than 30. That doesn't work here. In this case, regardless of the size of n, regardless of how large it is, we have to have the sample coming from an underlying normal distribution. Now, there are several chi-square distributions. They are defined by their degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom for the chi-square in this case is going to be n minus 1, which was exactly the same as it was for the t-interval. But the chi-square distributions are different in that they are not symmetric. They are right skewed. And we can see some of those distributions by looking at the following applet. We can see how the chi-square changes as we range from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 100 degrees of freedom. So here's the graph of a chi-square 1. Notice it starts at 0 and then gradually tails off to the right. If we have a chi-square 2, it looks a lot like 1, but the shape is starting to change. Chi-square 3, notice it starts at 0, goes up, and then comes down. Chi-square 4, all of these are right skewed. If I go to chi-square 10, you'll notice it's becoming a little bit more symmetric, but indeed it still is right skewed. And chi-squared 100 looks relatively symmetric. But our generic perspective of the chi-square is going to be a right skewed distribution that starts at 0 and ends at infinity. So here's our example. We want to construct a 95% con confidence interval for the variance given the following statistics. So n is 27, x bar is 34.6, and s is 5.2. s is a statistic. It is the standard deviation for our sample of size 27. The variance would be 5.2 squared, but that is not the parameter. The goal of a confidence interval is to capture the parameter. We don't know what the parameter is, but if it's a 95% confidence interval, that is our probability that our confidence interval will be good or will capture that theoretical parameter. To do this, we have to assume that the underlying distribution is normal. And as always, we have to assume that our sampling is done properly and that what we're working with here with our 27 items comes from a simple random sample. So here's our formula. Sigma squared is going to be sandwiched between n minus 1 s squared over chi squared right and n minus 1 s squared over chi squared left. So we know n and we know s. Our goal is going to be to find chi squared right and chi squared left. So we're starting with our degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom are n minus 1, in this case 27 minus 1, 26. So we have a chi-square 26. We're doing a 95% confidence interval. So we have 95% in the middle, 5% in the tails, split in half, 2.5% in this tail, and 2.5% in this tail. We're going to have to ask Minitab for those numbers. And there's our command, INVCDF.025, semicolon chi-square 26. That will give me the number in that tail. And you'll notice what it gives me. It gives me 13.8439. So 13.8439 is chi-squared left. That is the number on the left side of the distribution that corresponds to the 2.5 percentile. Now, to find this one on the right, if there's 2.5 percent on the right, that means there's 97.5 percent on the left. So we have to ask Minitab INVCDF.975 semicolon, again, chi-square 26. And it gives us 41.9232. So the number up here, chi-squared right, will be 41.9232. So there are two numbers, chi-squared left and chi-squared right. We're going to use those in our formula to find the 95% confidence interval for the variance. So again, our statistics and our chi-squared left, chi-squared right. Here's our formula, n minus 1, s squared over chi-squared right, less sigma squared, less n minus 1, s squared over chi-squared left. n minus 1, 27 minus 1, s squared, 5.2 squared, chi-squared right, 41.9232. You may ask, why do you divide by chi-squared right on the left? And the answer is you divide by the larger number to make the smaller fraction. So dividing by chi-squared right, this will be on the left. Dividing by the smaller number, that'll be a larger uh, number on this side, that'll be on the right. So plugging those numbers in, 
we then get a, our confidence interval for sigma squared is 16.77 and 50.78, the endpoints of that confidence interval. Now, we don't know if this confidence interval is good or not. The probability is 95% that this confidence interval covers sigma squared. We know what s squared is. The confidence interval will always cover s squared. S, of course, being the statistic, but we don't know whether or not it covers the parameter. So here's another example. This time we want to construct a 99% confidence interval for the variance. So how is this going to be different? Well, what we're going to do first is we're going to use Minitab to generate our sample. So we know that to do this procedure, it's got to come from a normally distributed set. So we can certainly ask Minitab to give us a sample of size 50 coming from a normal distribution with a mean of 64 and a standard deviation of 6. I don't expect x bar to be exactly 64. I don't expect s to be exactly 6 because these numbers are parameters. x bar and s are statistics. And then we're going to determine whether or not our confidence interval is good. We're doing confidence interval for the variance. If the standard deviation here is 6, the population variance is 6 squared or 36. So we'll determine if our confidence interval is good based on whether or not it captures 36. So here's what we're going to do. Random 50C1, normal 64.6. So this is going to generate 50 items from a normally distributed set with a mean of 64 and a standard deviation of 6. Then we're going to ask the computer to describe it. I've modified the describe command a little bit. So all I'm getting here is the n, n is 50, mean x bar is 63.895, standard deviation is 5.137, and I modified the describe command to give me the variance as well. So the variance here is 26.386, but that is s squared, that is not sigma squared, because this is coming from a sample of size 50. Sigma squared would come from an infinitely large population, and we want our confidence interval to cover that population variance. So here are the things we're working with. N is 50, X bar is 63.895, and S is 5.137. So we want to find chi-squared left and chi-squared right. This time we have 50 degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom is N minus 1. 50 minus 1 is 49. We want a 99% confidence interval. So our alpha level is 1 minus 0.99, or alpha is 0.01. And with confidence intervals, we're going to cut alpha in half. Alpha divided by 2, 0.01 divided by 2 is 0.005. So we are looking for chi-squared of 0.005 and chi-squared of 0.995 for a chi-square with 49 degrees of freedom. Chi-squared 0.005 would be chi-squared left. Chi-square of 0.995 would be chi-square right. So we're going to get those numbers from Minitab. So we're going to ask Minitab INV CDF.005 for our chi-square of 49, and it's going to shoot back 27.2493. This will be chi-squared left. Now to get chi-squared right, we need 005 in the right tail. So if 005 is in the right tail, 995 is in the left tail. So we say INV CDF.995, semicolon chi-square 49. And what's that going to give me? That's going to give me 78.2307. That's going to correspond to chi-squared right. So we have these two things, and we're going to use them in our computation to find out what the confidence interval for the variance is. 99% confidence interval for the variance. So our statistics, n, x bar, and s. And you may have noticed that x bar doesn't show up in the computation. The value of the sample mean is not relevant as we are computing the confidence interval for the variance. So there's our formula, n minus 1 s squared over chi squared right, less sigma squared, less n minus 1 s squared over chi squared left. Plugging in our numbers, n is 50, 50 minus 1 s, 5.137 squared, chi squared right, 78.2307. Less sigma squared, less 50 minus 1, 5.137 squared, divided by chi squared left, 27.2493. So that's our confidence interval for the variance. Now the question we're going to ask ourselves is that confidence interval correct? So recall this was what we started with. We said random 50 C1, normal 64 6, and then we had to describe C1. This 6 tells me that the population standard deviation or sigma is 6. And of course mu is 64, but if sigma is 6, the variance is 36. And the question is, did our confidence interval capture the variance? 
Our confidence interval was from 16.53 to 47.45. The probability is 99% that captured sigma squared. But the fact of the matter is we know what sigma squared is. It captured it. 36 is in between those two numbers. Therefore, we conclude it covers the population variance of 36, so that confidence interval is good.